Hey everybody! Today I want to show you a preview of the new Laravel Splate version 2. So two weeks ago I posted this thread on Twitter explaining that I am planning to split up the Splate repository in multiple repositories. So now it's just one big repository with everything in it. So uh, the blade and the view glue, uh, the navigation and modal stuff, all the components. But I really want to split it up because then it would be more maintainable. And then I can also work on some fundamental things that I want to change about Splate. So it should be much easier to get started with Splate. And also you shouldn't be overwhelmed with all the components and features that it's got. So what I want to show you today is this part, Splate Core. And if you've ever looked at the source code of Splate, let's go to the editor and let's go to the Laravel Splate repository. You will find out that for each Splate component, there are actually two files. So well, there's one view component, for example, this event component. And then there is also a Blade component. So here in resources, views, you can see that event component. Here you can see the blade part of that event component. Here we're using that view component and then we are binding some properties and we are actually injecting the blade template into the view template. So this is more or less the magic of Splate. And while this works great, it can be a bit of a pain to set up new components because you always need to think about the view part and the blade part. But after Laracon US this year, I was really inspired to take the fault philosophy to Splate. So let's see how it works in Splate 2. Here I've got a demo project and it's actually quite simple. Here's my web route file. It's just a demo route and I'm returning this view. So in the browser, you'll just see hello world. So up until now, if I wanted to make this Blade template reactive, I needed a custom view component or a Splate component. So I could do something like using the display data component and then wrap my content in here. Or if I wanted the custom view component, I could do something like custom component and then wrap all my stuff in here. But now it's much easier to bring views reactivity into this blade component. Let's refer to this and let's open a script tag in here. So script setup. And in here, I'm just going to work on my view component. So for example, let's add some two-way binding to an input element. So let's create a ref. We call this one framework. And I set it to Laravel as the default one. And then in here, in my template, I can use it in the V model. So framework. And then let's echo it out, see that it really works. Let's use a v-text framework and let's close the paragraph tag, hit save and let's see in the browser. So now you can see my input element with Laravel and if I change it, for example, to Symfony, you can see that the two-way binding works. And you can use other few features as well, for example, computed. So let's do something like uppercase framework equals computed and then we take the value of the framework to upper case and let's replace framework with uppercase framework let's go to the browser and you can see that this just works another cool thing you can do with this is use third-party libraries which is now much easier so for example let's take flat picker which is a daytime picker I will replace framework with something like selected, oops, selected date. And let's change the default to nothing. Let's get rid of this computed thing and select a date. Let's make this selected date. So I'm going to import the flat picker library from flat picker. And then when the component is mounted, so unmounted, we're going to initialize the flat picker library. And in here, we need to pass an ID or a ref. And refs used to be much easier in view 2 than in view 3 now. So I applied a bit of magic to make this much easier. So now when you add a ref to this input element, for example, date element, 
And now we have a magic refs object. And in here you will find date element. Let's save the file, go to the browser, and now you'll see we have a flat picker. And this all works with tree shaking, so you don't need to import flat picker globally in your window object or something like that. Now this is just a regular blade view, but we can also use a blade component and we can even use V model on a blade component. So let's see how that works. I'm going to open the terminal and I'm going to create a new blade component. Make component and let's create a select component. So select. Let's open the blade template. And in here I'm just going to use a simple select element. Let's pass the attributes. This is default blade stuff. And I'm going to add two options. Laravel and Tailwind. So now in my demo view, I'm going to get rid of all this flat picker stuff and I will create a framework ref again. And let's set it to Laravel as default. Let's get rid of the input element. And here we are going to use framework. And then below hello world, I'm going to use the new select component. And let's not forget to add the V model. V model equals framework. Let's go to the browser. You can see this works. But there's more. Because now in the select component, we can interact with the V model in the script tag. So script setup. And in here, I want to keep track of the changes. So I'm going to introduce a changes ref equals zero. And then we need to keep an eye on the model value. And you can do that with a watcher in view. So watch the model value property. And by the way, this is default view stuff. This is not some split magic. Then we can add a callback. And every time this model value changes, we want to increase the changes value. Below the select element, I want to echo it out. So changes, let's do it with the span and fee text again. Equal, oh, equals changes, close the paragraph tag, hit save, and let's go to the browser. Now we start at zero, and if we change the tailwind, you can see that it works. And if we change it back, yeah, we have to. Now the changes counter is a nice demo, but you probably won't use this in a real life application. And in Splate, we have something that's called bridge components, which allows you to call PHP methods from your view component. And that's now part of this new Splate core. So what I want to do is whenever somebody changes from Laravel to Tailwind or the other way around, I want to make a call to my PHP blade component. Let me show you how that works. Let's go to my blade component. And in here, I'm going to create a new method. And I will call this one save framework. And it accepts a framework. So what are we going to do with this string? Let's dump it to our log to see that it works. Invo save framework. Yeah, that's good for now. And you know what? Let's post the changes as well. So besides the framework string, we are also going to post the changes. So let's change this a bit. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that will work. All right. Let's go back to the blade template. And now in here, in my watcher, I am going to increase the changes, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to call this save framework method. So save framework with the value and with the changes. And that's it. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So we can see both screens and let's open that log file. All right, here we go. Let's do Tailwind. There it is. Let's change it back to Laravel. Tailwind, the first change, Laravel, the second change. So it's that easy to call a PHP method from your view component, but let's take it one step further. Let's bring this changes counter back to the PHP component. 
So in my select component, I'm going to introduce a public integer and I'm calling this one updates. I set it to zero and let's change the editor back to full screen again. So now when we hit save framework, I want to increase this updates property. So let's do that. This updates plus plus and that will do it. So how do I get this property into the view component? Well, Splate does it automatically for you. So let's go back to our select blade component. And in here, yeah, let's keep this. But in here, I'm gonna duplicate this. And instead of changes, I'm calling this updates. And that's it. Let's go back. Let's change Laravel to Tailwind. And you can see that the updates have been increased. Also, if I go back to Laravel, you can see that we now have two updates. So this is really nice. It automatically updates your properties, but what if you have a function call that's really gonna take a long time? Let's simulate that by adding some sleep to our select component. So before we are updating it, we're gonna sleep for three seconds. Yes, so now when I change from Laravel to Tailwind, you can see that the JavaScript has been updated and it takes three seconds to update the PHP component. So you might want to introduce some loading state and it has built in support for that as well. So back in the blade template, we can use this function name, say framework, dot loading to indicate that this function is running. So maybe below the select element, let's create a diff and then we do v if say framework dot loading and let's do something like loading dot 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 and that's it i'm hitting save and now when i change you can see that it's loading and whenever the updates increased the loading state is gone now there's one last thing that i want to show you that you can also add callbacks to the php method calls now we are manually updating the changes value and then we are calling that save framework method but let's change it the other way around. So instead of using a watcher here, I'm gonna create a button that will call that save framework method. So in here, we're gonna introduce a button, type of button, and on click, let's do something like handle, handle framework change. And I give it a label of save. So of course we need to create that method function handle framework change and in here we're going to call that save framework method that we've used earlier and we're going to pass it the model value but this time we're going to add a callback by using then and after it's been saved we're going to increase the changes so let's save this we need to change the value. Oops. So let's try that one again. From Laravel to Tailwind. Let's hit save. And there, yes, there it is. Now changes has increased with one. Now this is a little bit annoying that I need to wrap this save framework around this handle framework change method. I don't like this. So what we can do is call this then method directly on the save framework object. So let's remove the function. Let's remove the function call. And let's do it like this. Now we still need to replace this handle framework change method to save framework. And we should pass the model value, which is Laravel or Tailwind. And that's it. So now when I hit save, and well, let's change this to Tailwind, hit save. You can see that it's still loading and after that it increases both the updates and the changes. And this is great because now I can define my callbacks just once and I can use it multiple times. So if I add another button and I call this one store. Now it doesn't matter if I click save or store. Because in both cases it handles the callback by increasing the changes counter. 
So that's more or less a sneak peek at Splate Core, which will be part of Splate version 2. If I've got some more updates, I will definitely show you in the next video. All right, bye bye, take care.